Cronin Toyota and Cronin Nissan are honored to partner with Proudly We Served, as well as the continued support of our local active and retired military veterans across eastern Indiana. I'm Al Bledsoe, Veterans of Foreign War, Post 1108. And Ron Chappelle, Chaplain for Vietnam Veterans Post 777 here in Richmond. And our guest this morning is Chief Branham from the Richmond Police Department. How are you, sir? Good. Good. We're right. glad to have you today. Yes, Thanks so are. much for having me. certainly you. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit of what's going on with Richmond Police Department. What's uh, going on? We're staying busy. Um, we... Uh, have kind of been in a constant hiring phase for the past three years, and I think we're about to get over the hump. Uh, we're in our, we are in the middle of a, a hiring process right now. Um, we have two openings, and so that's good. We uh, we anticipate getting two hired uh, yet this spring, and then we'll have a list established for openings that come up for the next, hopefully, for the next couple of years. Are you having any veterans apply for those positions? or? Yeah, I actually uh, was looking at that this morning. Uh, we've hired 31 officers since um, January of 2016. Oh, wow. and that's on a 75-man department. Um, and about uh, close to half of that 31 have, have some kind of military service. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's good news. That's that's. I didn't realize that. That's a high number. And not that I would be partial to that, but do they tend to make better officers? That's all right. Don't put well, stuff up. And they do. Yeah. Um, from the standpoint that um, they understand a chain of command, mm -hmm. they um, mm -hmm. they've already been through a um, a basic training, which the police department is not as rigid. Although that first few weeks, it's pretty structured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they because they really try to weed out the, the weaker people who sure. probably just aren't going to have a lot of success. Right, right. So yeah, those folks always always excel. Mm -hmm. Do they go to the academy or do they have to go to school? Yeah, go to the police they... academy, 17 weeks yeah, okay. uh, over in Plainfield. My son-in-law is doing that now at the okay. county. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he's there now. Yeah. Been there a month, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have two he of them this class. So. <laughs> yeah. It's real structured and it in is. his case, I think it'll really add a lot to him because yeah. it'll keep him structured and they do all kinds of the it's what's well, just like basic training almost. it is i mean yeah. getting up and exercising exactly. and running and uh, just plus the mental part of it mm -hmm. because to be a police officer nowadays you guys do a, a tremendous job in this community sure. and it's that. just so yeah. difficult nowadays because yeah. you have so many uh, uh, i'm not going to say so many people out there that are not Unfortunately, uh, increasing crime increasing crime and and you sure. just you know um i i see more and more and i think it, it, it's got to be protocol where they just don't one officer don't just do it if you will they have another officer there yeah mo most calls require two officers um you know some sometimes it, it looks to be a little overkill but there's an officer safety component yeah, to yeah. that so sure what, what 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 does it take? What kind of person are you looking for? There's several requirements, and, and some of those are, are by state statute, but can be no felony convictions, mm -hmm. uh, can be no drug use um, a year prior to being hired. So um, they could have had a drug history? A limited drug history. Limit, okay. Now, when 33 years ago, there was none allowed. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, if, if you've been a... An experimenter, maybe with marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, that's just—it's just so common that mm -hmm. we would have nobody. If, uh, <laughs> if we yeah. You know, that's a that's a sad fact, but it's that's the truth. Sad. Um, so uh, yeah, we have to we have to look at those things. Now, if your if your drug history is much more than that, you're you're probably not going to get hired by us, at least. Yeah. So, if this marijuana so. thing gets gets but approved or, thinking, or it goes, boy, it's yeah. going to run it's, you guys absolutely what do you do with somebody like that yeah. i mean you have enough people sometimes i think on the street that are drinking that probably shouldn't sure. be driving and yeah. you get these people with marijuana and stuff that yeah. could be yeah. really, it'll be a whole nother layer of 
of, of, of problem you know, abuse. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Not only that, on your on your uh, issues, your, res your restrictions, you know. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't want a flagrant drinker or alcoholic right. to be a, right. an officer. And right. similarly, you know, even if marijuana is approved, you don't want somebody who's mm -hmm. consistently using it, even yeah. though it may be legal. Sure. You know. And you know, we have a pretty. Um, thorough investi background investigation and a psychological exam and mm -hmm. you know if, if excessive alcohol comes up we're probably not going to give you a job either right, so right, uh, wow. yeah marijuana becomes uh, legalized we'll probably have to change some hiring right. practices oh, sure. uh, all departments will have to so. yeah. I'm sure they're going to do that uh, I'm, I shouldn't say I'm sure nothing sure but they're they're going to legalize that, yeah. um, and if they legalize thing, it, then there's nowhere to go with it because right. it's like the veteran community, and that's what we're going to get into here in just a minute with the amount of opiates that are out there. Sure. Uh, people that are taking drugs that maybe don't need to take it, but they lean on it, and then the end result is a problem. Sure, a lot of the veterans uh, are exposed to the opiates in particular. Uh, when they're serving overseas, many who serve overseas. Sure. You know, I mean, I remember back in, in Nam, I mean, we literally slept in the fields yeah. of, of the stuff, you know. So, mm -hmm. And uh, so. That was almost a way of life, though. It, it, um, it was. I mean, it wasn't, you didn't take the hard stuff, the oxycodone or anything no, like no, that, but a, but the other stuff, yeah, that yeah, was, and it was yeah. so accessible, right. you could almost just go to the dispensary and tell them you had to have it right. and they'd yeah. give it to you. Right, and depending on the person <laughs> so, and sure. the experience that they had, people say, well, you can't get hooked on the hard stuff uh, doing marijuana. Right. Well, it depends on the trauma that you experienced in the course of that that determines mm -hmm. often how, you know, yeah. what people move on to. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, so uh, veterans uh, uh, need to be looked at uh, in a special way, I think. In the, sure. Of course, a little bit partial. Well, yeah. I think there's a. Isn't there? A, isn't there a special court system or something? If a veteran has an issue, am I thinking? No, I think there are. I we don't have that in Wayne County. We do, in uh, Muncie, Delaware yeah, County. Is that right? Remember, we had the guy that. on there, mm -hmm. and we were talking about, and that's what he did yeah. was help people that had to go to court, and there was right. a special court for veterans okay. that just got out, just come home, maybe mm -hmm. was still addicted to something, mm -hmm. couldn't get off of it, and all kinds of problems like right, that. Right, so right, that's, right, uh, right. we are to have one of those here maybe, I don't know. Yeah, you know, to tell you the truth though, I, I think we looked at numbers. I don't know that we'd see that we have a bigger issue with veterans in, in that area than mm -hmm. we do with, with most folks. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously they're subject to, to those problems mm -hmm. as much as you know the next group is, sure. uh, but I don't know that it's it's out of line with what the rest of the community right. Right. is involved right. with. Right. So. Do we have a big issue in Wayne County? Do you think is it is it uh, with narcotics? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah we do. Um, and you know Ron Stevens, our coroner, is a good one to ask about mm -hmm. numbers. But uh, mm -hmm. and I think our actually our overdose deaths are down this yeah. year, but I don't know that they're down significantly. Mm -hmm. It's it's still a problem, and you know a lot of that's. It, to my way of thinking, it's just education for sure. folks that, you know, that ends a couple of ways, either jail mm -hmm. or, or death. Yes. And, uh, yeah. 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 I think it was on the news the other day that there were 72,000 people yeah. that died from overdose yeah. or something like that. And when you think about NOM, uh, from I don't know, 63, yeah. let's say, to 75, yeah. right. we had 50, we lost 54,000 men. And, and okay. here last year, we, we lost 72,000 because of drugs mm -hmm. or some type of drugs right. and we're not willing to do anything about it. Yeah. That's kind of a different story maybe for a different day, but I just yeah, think it's, it's so overwhelming, you know. Yeah. It's so That's crazy. It is. I mean, it's, it is. And it's terrible to try to combat. It's just there's yeah. just not enough. Right. There's not enough cops on the earth. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah. And, and, and and I don't know that arrest is always that solution either. Yeah. Yeah, incarceration. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we have some kind of help for them, maybe, yeah. um, I think the Belden Company yeah. went to a program where they actually sure help people with it, mm -hmm. with alcohol, mm -hmm. with drugs, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Yep. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's part of the answer. Maybe. Yep. I mean, yeah, I've always true. thought that God has to take that from you. Yeah. That you cannot. It's hard to do it on your own. Sure. But that's just what I think. So. 
But from it's a corporate a, point of view, that's a pretty tremendous step to say, we'll, we'll get you, yeah. you know, straightened out and give you a job. That's okay. pretty, <laughs> pretty unheard of, really. That's right. Well, you have to have a lot of support people around you. I mean, you right. have to uh, constantly be around people that are positive, that aren't in the, the gutter with all that stuff, I think, that you sure. just can't. You just can't do it. I mean, mm -hmm. unless you got the support to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Chief, what are your folks saying for, in terms of what they're seeing on the streets? Where locally, we are actually seeing it. And I'll, I'll kind of take a quote from the guy who runs our drug task force. But they aren't buying as much, and we're talking about controlled buys. Mm -hmm. um, they're not buying as much heroin as they are meth. They've seen a real. Um, a, real spike in methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that anybody has a great explanation for that. Somehow, mm. you know, that's, that's a, it's a lot of Mexican dope. A lot mm -hmm. of, a lot of uh, meth is coming up from Mexico. Um, but so that's, that's where they're spending a lot of their time. Now here, I, I, let me, my, my ignorance, pardon me on this, but you know, we have a methadone clinic. Different drug. Different drug. Different drug. Oh, okay, I need yeah. help with that. <laughs> Methamphetamine is, is manufactured by in, in illicit drug okay. labs. Okay. Um, okay. You know, by by the high school dropout down the street. Okay. Um, and methadone is a is a prescription drug that that can be abused. It's a Schedule II drug, so it can be abused. It oftentimes is. It's right. unfortunate, mm -hmm. but um, used properly, the idea is. Um, you use methadone till you wean yourself off of what other you know, drug you're you're hooked on. So, right, right. Wow. Um, you know, the, the problem with the methadone is it does get abused. When when I was in the drug unit, we would end up buying methadone off right. the street. People okay. would use it. So. Well, if you go up to the clinic where the Seabock used to be, mm -hmm. for veterans up on Garwood, I think that's where it's at now. I mean, you yeah. go up there seven thirty, eight o'clock yeah. in the morning, you can't find a parking place. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they're start all waiting early. in line to right. get that stuff. They really start early. Um, and, you know, and for some of those folks, it's because they have a job and they need to get that out of the way so sure. they can get on to work. Right. And, and you know, and you got to commend those folks. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a, that's a very busy place. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. your officers carry Narcan also. Right. And yeah. it's always that, like um, in this stakeholders thing, veteran stakeholders thing next month, I think mm -hmm. you're actually going right. to be there right. with uh, Randy. Redder, our sheriff, right. uh, and show how the administration of Narcan. Yeah, or not, yeah Narcan. Yeah. As and, a and what we use is a, is a real simple product. It's a nasal um, you know, injection. The fortunate thing about being in the city of Richmond is we've only used that maybe twice since we started carrying it because we have we have the fire department and EMS okay. almost always on scene wow. you know, with us or quite often before us. So uh -huh. We have not had to use it very often, but. Yeah, it is available, and it re it really must work. I mean, it does. Just, yeah, uh, and I think the more you get used to having to use that, uh, the more you overdose, the more um, doses it takes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, it, it it's kind of a miracle thing to see it work. It, can you overdose on meth? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you can't can overdose. Too. Yeah, absolutely. So if these people are going to the clinic. Can they like get too much or? Well, is, methadone is, that, is a is methadone a, is actually was developed as a pain medication, so it's a depressant. Where right. meth okay. amphetamine is a stimulant. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. kind of like cocaine. All right, different drug, but you know it's a stimulant in that category. So yeah, what is the drug they talk about on uh, that that a lot of the heroin stuff is laced with? Fentanyl. What's the other drug that it, I can't say it? You said fentanyl. 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 Right, yeah. fentanyl. So yeah. do we see much of that in, yeah. a, in our city? We do. Um, wow. Well, I don't know. Well, I'll say a lot, but we see fentanyl from time to time. Mm -hmm. And fentanyl, uh, again, developed as a, a pharmaceutical to help folks, and now it's been diverted to, you know, it's being made in labs. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the bad thing is you don't know what you're getting. You know, you're getting, maybe you're getting a little rat poison, a little baby powder you don't know. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. If you see these people like on the street, how do you determine, like um, I think it was last Thursday maybe or Friday, um, four people from RPD 
had a person out on 40 stops. So mm -hmm. how, how do they determine to stop that guy? Does, has he done something yeah. stupid or missed a red light? Or, <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm just curious as to how do you determine that because you see on, when you go to, I was in Dayton yesterday, and along 70 you see, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it's DEA or some kind of, enforcement yeah. where they got somebody out there and they got everything out of the car and everything. How do they know to stop a guy the like that? The highway interdiction people, they operate all, off a lot of your driving behaviors. Um, if you're following too close, if you're, you know, um, you drive, the, the officer drives by the guy, you know, and he's just looking straight ahead and won't, mm -hmm. you know, maybe driving under the speed, but there's just things that you look at and you, mm -hmm. you wonder. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it seems yeah. to me that if a person was under the influence of medication or drugs or whatever you want to call it, it looks like to me that that would be a difficult stop to me. I mean, if you stop the course, you never know what you're going to get. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that would the, be the, dangerous. The behavior, you mean? The, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, sure. the behavior, is he going to jump up or pull yeah. a gun on you, or what's he going yeah. to do? Yeah. And that's why you see, I think, a lot of times on TV of, of the police officers that are that are shot or something like that because half these people are on drugs yeah. and they just really don't even realize what they're doing. Yeah, that's pretty, just, pretty unpredictable. Yeah, that's just, to me, that would be so dangerous. So, Chief, I, I had an experience one time. When I hadn't been here but maybe three years or so, and there was a fellow who had started selling drugs out of the house across the street from our church. Mm -hmm. And I went over and talked to him. And... You were on the force then. Yeah, and, and probably I, was. And, and, I, and I talked to this fella and I told him, I said, we're going to stand for this and that somebody had to go and it wasn't going to be us. <laughs> <laughs> and so he persisted and I kept seeing the traffic. So that's when I contacted your guys. Okay. And they actually set up an outpost out of the basement of the church. Okay. okay. And a couple of weeks, it wasn't that long. Yeah. Uh, I come by, I come to the church and... Uh, they're all outside and everything. He's standing out there. Yeah. And I walked across the street. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, "It's a shame it had to come to this." Yeah, you know. But my and my point there is that community needs to get more involved Absolutely. in yeah. assisting law enforcement yeah. and eradicating these drug houses. Yeah, and we, you know, we have a, a very active drug task force, mm -hmm. um, and they would love to talk to somebody like that that says, "Hey." I've got this issue across the street from me, and you're welcome to use my house or my church or my business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would encourage people make contact um, with the Wayne County Drug Task Force. So. Yeah. Now it's not always a quick process, and that's probably the complaint I hear is, you know, I, I reported this three weeks ago and nothing's happened. Yeah. For the same reason that we don't want Johnny the drug dealer to see the cops, you're not going to see him either. Right. So they're, exactly. You can rest assured they're probably in the area. Yeah. Yep. Um, but they're, you're not going to know it, yeah. and that's the unfortunate yeah. thing about drug investigation. Years ago, we had a guy at the, the carpet store that that uh, uh, I hired. He had uh, just one little black mark against him, and I didn't think that was was a drinking problem. Yeah. So I got a hold of him, and I said, you know, I'll get the drinking out of you, because yeah. I said I'll work you so hard you won't have time <laughs> to drink, and and that's kind of how he and I exchanged everything. Yeah. And then fast forward that he was actually one of the biggest I'm going to call them distributors out of Hamilton, Ohio, wow. and I'll never forget when I come to work one morning, they were bashing each other with two before this guy and another guy, and he was a bloody mess. Well, then I got involved in it, so it's going to take me on. Yeah. So I told him, I said, you don't think I'm stupid enough to come out here without calling the police, do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. About that time you guys showed up, yeah. Donnie Ponder uh, mm -hmm. grabbed the guy. Mm -hmm. And I had a little small office, and he virtually grabbed the guy, threw him against the wall, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, tell Al why I'm arresting you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they took him downtown, and then somebody out of Ohio got him off on a technicality yeah. or something. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. somehow he slipped away, though. They watched him. They virtually sat at the old skating rink mm -hmm. and watched the carpet store and watched his van. They had guys there 24 hours a day, yeah. and somehow he slipped away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't know how, but yeah. he didn't have a driver's license. So he mm -hmm. couldn't yeah. drive. So okay. somehow, though, he got slipped away, and then Later down the road, uh, they had caught him out at the mall and uh, put him in Wayne County and took him to uh, Chillicothe. Mm -hmm. I think that's where they took him. Okay. Does the department have anything like uh, uh, 
an assistance department. For example, if somebody's out there and they're on drugs mm -hmm. and they don't know where to go, mm -hmm. uh, is, can they call the department really and, and we help? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll point them in the right direction. I mean, mm -hmm. we have resources that we'll send them to. We don't do, you know, we're a law enforcement agency. Sure, right, right, right. Uh, so we don't really do the counseling. We don't do um, really even a referral, but we will certainly point you in the right direction, mm -hmm. whether that be, you know, there, there are churches, you know, Solid Rock Ministries is a good example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, whether we point them to that mm -hmm. direction, um, you know, I, from the standpoint of helping them, this will sound odd, but, you know, sometimes arresting a person and send them through that court system, you know, mm -hmm. there is, the Wayne County prosecutor does have a, uh, you know, process where they, um, you know, you complete rehab and right. your, your charges, you know, go the way. Right, right, um, right. So, you know, those, there are some, right. very much some positives out there. Yeah. Um, but it's still on your record, and if you're arrested, it it's right. still on your record yeah. to, unless you get it or somehow get it expunged sure. or get it sure. taken off, it's yeah. going to be on there. Mm -hmm. So right. you, that's going to tag you the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got to be careful of your choices, that's for Boy. sure. <laughs> well, since this program is specifically, uh, for the most part, aired, uh, focused on veterans. Mm -hmm. Are there any particulars or anything that you could give us to mm -hmm. help the veteran community? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I think veterans and the police, they, they do share a pretty solid kinship. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of veterans who say, you guys are the only ones that I interact with now that <laughs> you know that know a little bit at least yeah, about what sure, sure. what I did in the military. So yeah. there, there's definitely a kinship there. We, at least my experience is, ninety percent of the times we deal with a veteran who may be in some kind of distress, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. always always respectful, always. Um, and of course you have your exceptions. Oh but, yeah, oh yeah. Um, but you know, always pretty much a, a pretty good outcome. We mm -hmm. we recently just in the last few days had an incident with a. A veteran, combat veteran, who probably suffering with some uh, PTSD, yeah. um, in a in a bad domestic with his wife, mm -hmm. and uh, we end up getting called. But you know, very respectful with us. You know, mm -hmm. he, he was actually armed, and uh, we explained to him, "Hey, don't know you from Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I want to take that pistol." Yeah, and uh, and he was okay with that. And I think when it was all said and done, he was leaving and, and got his his weapon back. Um, legally, you know, yeah. had a permit and been good to carry it. Um, kind of respect for authority. Yeah, which is that's just what I was getting ready to say. Right even right though the, you in the military, exactly. even though the PTSD is, is there, that yeah. grinding of yeah. authority and respect for a yeah. person yeah. that's doing what mm -hmm. you right. guys are doing, that's right. just that's which, that's a good which story. helps also to make them uh, more uh, better officers. I think. In, yeah, in, in and you know, know, we were talking earlier about our our new guys. So many of them. Uh, reservist, uh, National Guard, something. So mm -hmm. they, you know, when when you sit, when that officer sits down and get, starts to talk with that veteran, they're talking about, right. you know, wherever yeah. they were stationed. Yeah. You know, that oh, yeah. creates a bond pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah. it works out well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. So if I'm a veteran uh, and I'm looking and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I want to get into law enforcement, what do I do? Okay. Um, in Indiana, well, we'll just talk about the Richmond Police Department. Because of the way our pension system is set up, you have to be 21 years old, you can't, can't have not reached your 36th birthday yet. So 21 to 35, um, there you go. Um, <laughs> like you I said, <laughs> no felony convictions. We have a, a process in place. Um, and if you call the police department, speak with Major John Bales, he's in charge of our hiring. And John can explain it all to you. But um, there's an online test. We use a company now for that. Um, saves us a ton of money. Mm. Um, you pay for the test, mm. but the good thing is it, it will give you a list of, I don't know, maybe a hundred different departments across the country that use that same testing platform. So you can check off as many as you want to. Those test results will go to that department. Mm. Um, wow. That'd be a so, good thing. So we have that. You you score a minimum score on that test, and I'll, and I'll let's say it's seventy percent. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, then you'll move on to the next phase, which in our case is a physical agility test. Mm -hmm. um, and what we use for that are the exit standards for the academy. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and we use the exit standards so we know that if we send you, you're going to pass. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So we have that, you pass that, you go on to the next phase, which is an interview, and mm -hmm. then there's a psychological test. And uh, by the time you get past the interview, you're, you're pretty much assured of a mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. at least being on the list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they yeah. keep that up, the physical part of it and the mental part of it? Do you, do you have uh, like classes that they go to to train them? For the hiring? Yeah, well, after they're hired and they're actually on the street, if you will. Well, not so much. If we if we start to see a an issue with an officer, we may send them back to the psychologist, you know, everything oh, wow. okay with this guy. Uh, really rely on their expertise. Sure. The physical end of things, we, we certainly encourage physical fitness. Um, we do not have a standard after guys are hired to maintain that. Yeah. Um, it's something that we've kind of played with back and forth, but it's never been written hmm. in stone. Yeah. One of the things I'd be interested in is um, our, our percentage of, of minorities mm -hmm. on the force, are we making any efforts in that area? Making uh, efforts, not making a lot of progress. Okay. And that's just yeah. the flat truth. Yeah. We, I know, I've worked uh, with you guys. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, nationally they tell you 10% of your workforce should be minority. Mm -hmm. Um, or basically you should match your city, the city right. um, which runs around 10%. Mm -hmm. We are not at that. We're probably more like less than 5%. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We try to, and as you know, Ron, we try right. to recruit and, and encourage minorities to apply. Right. Um, and we just don't, we don't have a lot of applicants. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have some that, you know, have success. We hired a, a young man last year, I ended up not staying, mm -hmm. but uh, we, we hired a, an African-American, mm -hmm. um, real sharp kid, mm -hmm. but decided to be a fireman. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and, and I know one time when, uh, um, oh gee, it's been at least 15, 20 years ago, um, right after I got here, uh, there was a big uh, push by Shake. Uh, he hired a company in mm -hmm. Cincinnati to do some recruiting and all right. that, and had about 30 or so that were going to come, we're mm -hmm. going to take them around the city, and another, some cities offered them mm -hmm. more money, and yep. so they, they yep. didn't And come. that's something we fight too, is retaining the officers that we hire. Okay. Um, you know, I, what a, what you don't realize when you're 25 is you don't make as much money, but it doesn't cost as much to live in Richmond okay. Indiana as it does. Okay. You and, know, and the retirement opportunities and possibilities are much greater here. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hey, think we're on minute. We're down on time, guys. Okay. We, you gotta, we gotta go. Oh, we gotta go. We gotta I didn't go. realize that. Okay. Yeah, we gotta so, go. thank you for coming, See, Chief. Been, thank we you really good, appreciate good, it. Good, good yeah. talk. Yeah. yeah a lot very of good information. Good. And so, we thank you, folks, for tuning in to Probably We Serve. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Cronin Toyota and Cronin Nissan are honored to partner with Proudly We Served, as well as the continued support of our local active and retired military veterans across eastern Indiana.